So let's look at finding the inverse for this guy. f of x is equal to 2 times the cube root of x plus 5. A little bit more complicated, but I think we can still use our little shortcut here. So if I look at my function f and I start with x, what's the first thing that I'm doing with my x, with my input value? I add 5, and then what do I do? I'm doing the cube root, and then I do what? Multiply it times 2. That is the order of operations for my original function. Each step along the way has its own inverse function to it, right? So that means that if I want to write my inverse function, I start with x, and what's the first thing that I do to undo things? Divide by 2. Divide by 2, and don't you feel in your heart you want to say n square it? But that's not really <laughs> what we have going on here. So I divide that by 2. What's the opposite of the cube root? Cube. So I'm just going to symbolize it like this, parentheses to the third power, and then I'll do what? Subtract. I'm going to subtract 5. So that means that my inverse function, f inverse of x, is going to be written as what? How do you write all of this going backwards? x over 2 cubed minus 5. x divided by 2. The whole thing raised to the third power and then minus 5. Now I think one of the things that we had talked about before was that there was a a line of reflection for the inverse. Do you remember that? Y equals x is a line of reflection between it's a line of reflection between f of x and its inverse. That means that what you see on one side of y equals x, if you flip on the other side of y equals x, it, you'll see the inverse. Uh, so let's graph this so you can see what we're talking about. Actually, I think we've done an example of that before. Now this is what we had previously. You have y equals x going right down the middle. And what we had said last time was we were trying to investigate the difference between x cubed plus 2 and the cube root of the quantity x minus 2. And so you can see how these guys are reflections across y equals x. So we just did a guy right here. Let's see how this compares uh, and, you know, in terms of being an inverse. So 2 times x plus 5 raised to the 1 third power. And that's that my inverse should be the quantity x divided by 2 to the third minus 5. So when I graph this, there is 2 times, this is 2 times the cube root of x plus 5. Okay. Here's what I'm saying the inverse is, which is x divided by 2 cubed minus 5. And now when I do y equals x, you see that it goes right in between those guys. Okay. Makes this nice line of reflection there. Now, what we can observe from this is the following, uh, note, some following notes about inverses. Okay. So, if I have f, and I'm comparing this guy to my inverse function, Whatever is my domain for f will be the exact same thing as the range for f inverse. Whatever was the range for f matches up with the domain for f inverse. Okay. And if you have a point a comma b on f, 
guess what you're going to have on f inverse? It's going to be b, comma a. So if you've been working your homework, you probably would have seen that come up. And it's really not, not that difficult. You can see here, you've got this order pair right here, which is you know 0, I don't know, 0 something. It's not going to be pretty. But it's, all, it's reflected over here. Just those order pair, the, the coordinates are just flipped around. And you see that any place you cross y equals x, that's where y equals x. So if y and x are the same, you flip them around, it's still going to be the exact same point. So wherever one graph crosses y equals x, his inverse will also cross y equals x.